Have you ever experienced a situation where you finish a web design, you hand it off to a front end developer to build, they code it, send it back to you, and it just doesn't quite match your design. Small things like padding and font size might be off by a few pixels, but it all makes a huge difference to your final design and you want it to match what you created. Today, I wanna to talk about this problem and also give you a solution to it. So here's the thing about closing that gap between design and development in your work. And that is if you as the designer take a step forward and move a little bit more into the development side, it's gonna make the whole process smoother and you're gonna get a better end result. Don't panic, I'm not saying that you need to learn to code, but what I am saying is that you should gain an understanding of how code works. If code is not something you've ever dived into before, then here's a very quick crash course in HTML and CSS. HTML is the structure of our web page. This is what we start with. This is the layout, this is the bones for your website. Then we use CSS to style this layout. So CSS classes that are applied to HTML components tell the browser how this layout should look. Take this button, for example. Really, it's just a link, which is an HTML element, but then we add CSS styling to it to add a background, some padding, give it some rounded corners, take off the underline, and voila, a button. <laughs> All right, that's our crash course. So if we got that, the HTML is the structure and the CSS is the layer of styling that goes on top of it. If that felt a bit overwhelming or if code is just not something you're interested in getting good at, then the good news is you don't actually have to write it from scratch in order to use it in your design process. There are other options. This is why I really like Webflow and talk about it so much on this channel because they make code extremely accessible for designers. In fact, when you're using it, you might not even realize that you're coding, but you are. Let's just quickly jump into the Webflow Designer so I can show you what I mean. On the left-hand side here is my add panel where I put different elements into my design. And this is adding the structure, this is adding the layout, this is the HTML. Then over here on the right-hand side is where all my styling options are. So this is how I am tweaking the CSS. I am changing colors, I'm adding borders, doing everything that I would if I was coding CSS by hand, but instead here, it's just in a WYSIWYG editor. So if we take a look here at the code view, we can see that all those things I was doing was building out a web page in code. Here's my HTML and here's my CSS. I can also add hover states to all my buttons. I can add interactions to elements. Doing this will be much more powerful than just handing your developer a static mock-up with maybe some vague description of what you want an element to do when you hover over it. Here, you can mock it up, you can play with it yourself, you can figure it out. People can see how it works and how it feels to interact with it. And while you could just export this code and, and host it as your landing page, if you work on an app or perhaps you're just designing a single page within a much, much larger site and you work with a developer, then you can treat this Webflow design as an interactive mock-up. The developer that you're working with is gonna be able to copy styles from it. They'll be able to see exactly what code went into the interaction that you're hoping for. It's gonna mean that the final product, the final build will be much, much closer aligned to your design because there isn't this design and development disconnect anymore. You might not even have to bother building out the whole page in Webflow. Perhaps you could just focus on building the components that have trickier elements to them or things that were harder to express in a static mockup. I hope you found this video useful and that maybe you feel a bit more confident now about bridging this gap between design and development and making that process smoother. So the more that you can gain an understanding of code or utilize tools like Webflow to bridge that gap, the better your final product will be. If you want to try out Webflow for your next project, then there'll be a link in the description where you can do that for free. And I'd like to make some more videos about this designer developer relationship. So if there's any questions you have or any particular issues that you've come across in your time, you know, working on web designs, then please let me know about them down below in the comments and let's talk about that some more. All right, thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and hit subscribe if you're new because I make new videos about design every single week and I'd love to see you in the next one. All right, have a good day. See you next time. Bye.